Okay guys, let's take up the Avada here first and then we'll fly the uh, Mavic Pro uh, second here. First of all, we'll take the Avada because it's a uh, great drone for uh, flying through little places, little crevices. Uh, I can fly like three, four feet above the ground and uh, go down pathways and stuff like I can't do with the uh, Mavic. That's why it's a great drone. <coughs> the reason being is uh, you can put the um, view screen right up to your eyes, like with the goggles, of course. And uh, you can't do that with the Mavic. Um, you're looking at a smartphone or a tablet and uh, you'll get reflections. You don't get true colors right in front of you like you can with a set of goggles. So that's why the Avada is so much fun to fly. Uh, you've got the goggles. It's like you're right there, right inside the drone, um, flying along, whatever you're doing, small little crevice places and what have you. So um, the idea is we're going to take the Avada up here first fly around a little bit through this park, large park. Uh, the foliage is so thick that you cannot walk in into the forest at all or into the jungle. Uh, you have to stay on the pathways. You can see in the jungle a little ways, but that's it. Uh, you, you can't go in, in into the, the forest at all. It's a big park and it only has these uh, pathways. There's a uh, car park at one end, a car park uh, parking lot at the other end, and then there are several pathways to get from one to the other. You go to like uh, Solar Maya, uh, there's a p big pond, there's a playground, um, there's a few places, uh, the, there's bathrooms, there's a museum, uh, there's places you can go but you have to follow the pathways. There is no way to, other way to get there. You can't just wander off. So, and, and it's a huge park yet. So it's, you can't even, when you're flying above the trees, you can't even see the pathways. There, it's, the, the foliage is so overgrown. Uh, you can't see the pathways at all. You can see the parking lots, but that's, that's about it. So let's head up here to uh, the first parking lot, just where I took off from went down a small uh, driveway, it's not even, it wasn't even a path, it was probably where they were doing work or something at one time. So this is the parking lot here, and uh, I'm s sort of standing straight ahead of us, can't see me yet, but um, I'm looking for a way to get into the other buildings there. And I see a small doorway opening here, but uh, I was kind of leery about going through there at first. So I turn around and go through the other side of the park. So let's just uh, have a look. Small, tight little place. I could have went through there, but uh, I turn around and I go through the parking lot here first. And uh, there I am. And we'll find another place where I can go in, fly down the pathways and uh, take a little tour through through the small area that I was at there. Now just ahead on the left side, I uh, see a pathway that I can go down. And like I said, we're flying three, maybe four feet at the most above the ground, which is nice. That's cool. It's a great way to fly uh, the Avada. It's that, that's where you can, this where the Avada really shines. It is a cinematic drone, but it's uh, more, it's called a whoop drone. <clears throat> and yes, you can do cinematic footage like you see here. And with the motion controller, you can't really do flips and uh, rolls and things like that. With the uh, other controller, with the sticks, then you can do 
uh, flips and rolls and what have you, but uh, I prefer not to do that. <coughs> now, a lot of the buildings in Mexico, uh, in the parks and stuff like this, are like open air. This, I think this is the museum, if I'm not mistaken. But you can see all around the edge of the outside is like open air. And there are a lot of buildings, that's how they're built. They're just like open air, just enough to cover the coverage for the rain, but that's about it. it since it doesn't get cold here, you don't need um, walls, you know, and heating to keep the cold out. <coughs> All right, back on the pathway, we'll make a left turn here and then down the pathway to the uh, banyo, which is bathroom. And I think the building there on the right is the bathroom. Never went in the museum and I never went in the bathroom, so I'm not too sure. I'm just more or less guessing that that's what that was. The building straight ahead, I still don't know what it is. It looked like it was abandoned. So I'm not quite too sure what it is. Now the beauty of the Avada as opposed to walking is straight ahead is a pathway that had a, a rope cross or a chain or across it, which meant, you know, don't walk through there. But the beauty of the drone is I can fly through there and have a look and see what, what kind is going on. You can see the wire hanging above. I just went underneath it. And there are some either ruins or what have you in here. Uh, I don't know if this is supposed to be like a water water fountain thing, water coming out of the pitcher, but wasn't working at the time. Maybe they were fixing something there. And we'll take a trip back to the uh, bathroom uh, building area there. Make a right hand turn. See, this is where I could never take. Well, I could, but I don't wouldn't want to take the Mavic through here like this. Uh, even if I had uh, prop guards, which I don't have on the Mavic, but even with prop guards on, I wouldn't go through here like this. And straight ahead is that. I'm sure it's. Well, I'm not sure, but it looked like it was an abandoned building. It had paintings on the side, animal paintings, and I'm sure th those animals were in the park somewhere. Like the, uh, that, that sort of a monkey animal. It's, it, it, it's uh, the Koti, uh, C-O-A-T-I. And they pronounce it with a Q on the front, like Koti. And uh, cute little animals. Bigger, well, as, as but a medium sized dog, and uh, they would come right up to you, they wouldn't let you touch them. And I'm sure that they are like a fruit eating and a uh, insect grub eating animal. They would uh, root around with their long nose and root up um, different insects and bugs and worms or whatever they're finding. And I read online that they uh, are they eat fruit also, but I uh, I didn't see any fruit around, so I didn't take any with me either. Now straight ahead is a busy street. This is the parking lot I'm in right now, and there was a family standing at the gateway there, uh, either waiting for a bus or waiting for someone to pick them up. And uh, right about here is where they noticed me, the drone, and uh, they all turned around and looked. And the two little boys, they were very interested. They started to walk towards the drone. And uh, I didn't want them to touch the drone. You can see him waving there. I didn't want him to touch the drone. You know, he get his fingers caught, all the, even, it, even if it had uh, prop guards on it. Those props are turning pretty fast. So they, they wanted to see the drone. And all of a sudden, they all started to wave, everybody. And the one little boy, he was brave. He wanted to, I, he wanted to, to see the drone and maybe touch it or something, but uh, we couldn't have that. So I flew away 
and uh, believe it or not, he's following me. I'm not going too fast, so he's uh, he's trying to follow me. And I come around, and I see they're they're coming up the other pathway. And so I uh, sped up, and I went farther away from them. I didn't want it to get any closer. And there we are back to where I was standing. All right, here we are with the uh, Mavic Pro drone up above the tree line or the tree tops. Uh, like I said, you can see the buildings, the museum, the bathroom there. Uh, but you can't see the pathways, which is, uh, it's all covered with the tree, the trees are covering it. You can see the driveways, um, and I'll, they'll come up here in a minute, but uh, that's all you can see. This is a huge park too. So there we have a bit of Cancun that you can see. There's a busy street there. I'm not quite too sure what street that is. That could be uh, the Tulum Street or Escaret Street. I'm not quite too sure which street that is, but it's just showing a little bit of, uh, this isn't quite downtown Cancun, but very close to. Where I'm staying, it, there's a lot of uh, businesses around here. There's a Costco, there's the stadium, there's uh, um, Soriana, which is uh, like a grocery store. There's uh, all kinds of uh, businesses around here, so, and it's, about 5.30 in the afternoon. You can see the rush hour cars. They're going the one way. They're all piled up there. The other way is clear. And at 6 o'clock, the park closes. It's, it's fenced off all the way around the whole park. And uh, the gates to the uh, parking lot are open until 6 o'clock. And then they close up because uh, it gets dark at starting at 6, like dusk. Is, it's about 5.30, so it's dusk right now, and uh, the park's going to close. In a, I didn't know that at the time. Some guys came around and spoke in Mexican, and they got the across that they're closing. So I finished my flight, and then I left. So what you can see is uh, a bit of the parking lot there. Uh, that's all you can see. And if you... Um, follow the parking lot along a little ways, it turns into the paths, but you can't see them because they're uh, covered over with the trees. So you can't even see the, um, the pathways. Although I do have some footage of, um, there's a place called um, Solar Maya, or Maya Solar, I can't remember, but <coughs> it is um, a place where there's like kind of ruins. There's a couple of sheds or, or huts or whatever you call it there with a well and uh, it was obviously abandoned and it might have been like kind of ruins so I took my drove my Avada around flew it around in there a couple times <clears throat> but I learned something also about the Avada because the lowest frame rate that you can video record in is 60 frames uh, per second and uh, the card the SIM card that I had in there, or the um, the uh, SD card that I had in there, can't record that fast. So that when I played back the um, footage, it would be really jerky. It couldn't handle the speed. So I learned my lesson a couple times. I, I wondered why is that so jerky? And I found out because uh, I had the wrong uh, uh, SD card couldn't handle the speed so anyways that got fixed but I have to go back and take some more footage of that particular place and there's another uh, area of Cancun there and probably a, a 5G tower there or whatever they have 5G here it's a population of a million people uh, 998,000 people so it's just j a couple thousand short of a million people living in Cancun
So it's not like an overly large city. Uh, large enough, though. And you can see it's just coming dusk right now. It's like I said, it's about 5.30, just about going on to 6 o'clock, pretty close. It's going to get that dark pretty soon. And by 6.30, it's, it's dark. So there's a little bit more footage left. Stick around, watch to the end. And uh, I just want to thank each and every one of you for stopping by, taking the time out of your day to watch my video. And I uh, hope you return to watch others. I have some uh, footage of beaches and uh, other ruins and things coming up. So stay tuned, guys. As usual, stay awesome, be kind, stay cool, and most of all, stay nomadic outlaws. And to become a nomadic outlaw, all you have to do is subscribe to Nomadic Bandman. You automatically become a nomadic outlaw. Thanks guys for coming out, and we'll catch you guys all on the next one. Stay tuned.